in my previous video I had derived one dimensional wave equation. Also I have explained finding solution of this one dimensional wave equation using method of separation of variables. Now here I will explain one problem in which initial conditions are given. So this is the question. A string is stretched and fastened to two points which are at, at a distance L. Find the displacement if the string is given an initial displacement f of x and an initial velocity g of x. Now then we know that the displacement y of x t of the string is described by one dimensional wave equation which is dou square y by dou x square is 1 by c square multiplied by dou square y by dou t square. Now next we will be finding boundary conditions and initial condition. Now we consider this case the string is fastened to two points A and B. So at the point A the value of x is 0 and at the point B the value of x is L. So y of 0 t means displacement at the point A and that value is 0. Y of L t means displacement at the point B and that is also 0. They are known as boundary conditions. So then I have uh, named these boundary conditions as equation number 2. They are y 0 t equal to 0, y L t equal to 0. Next we will be writing initial conditions. So initial conditions are given in the problem. So it is given that initial displacement is fx in the question. So that means the displacement at t equal to 0 is f of x. And also it is given initial velocity is g of x. That means velocity at t equal to 0 is g of x. So I have written these two conditions here and they are the initial conditions of the problem. Now we know that if we are using method of separation of variables solution of the wave equation is y of x t is c1 cos px plus c2 sin px multiplied by c3 cos cpt plus c4 sin cpt. Now our aim is to find out c1, c2, c3, c4 using the given boundary conditions and initial conditions. So we will use the first boundary condition now. So consider the boundary condition y of 0 t equal to 0. Now substitute x is equal to 0 in equation number 4. Then left hand side value of y 0 t is 0. So 0 equal to and when x is equal to 0 cos 0 is 1 and sin 0 is 0. So we will get c1 c3 cos c p t plus c4 sin c p t. Now then in this case either c1 is 0 or the term inside the bracket is 0. But the term inside the bracket is 0 only if c3 and c4 simultaneously equal to 0. But which is not possible because c3 and c4 are 0 at the same time means from equation number 4 y will be 0. Therefore the only possibility is that c1 is 0. So then we got a value of one constant that is c1, c1 is 0. Therefore, we can write 4 in this way y of x t is equal to c2 sin p x multiplied by c3 cos c p t plus c4 sin c p t. I will take it as fifth equation. Now then we have to find c2 c3 c4 for that we find the second boundary condition. So second boundary condition is that 
y of l t equal to 0. Now we will apply this one in fifth equation so that we will put x is equal to l in equation number 5. So when you are substituting this value left hand side will be 0, 0 equal to sin c2 sin p l multiplied by c3 cos c and uh, p okay, cos c p t plus c4 sin c p t. Now then in this case the this term inside this bracket cannot be 0 and if c2 is 0 then from equation number 5 y will be 0 which is not possible. So, only possibility is that sin p l is 0. So, then if sin p l is 0 p l is n pi. So, we will take n from 1, 2, 3, 4 etc. Because if you are taking n equal to 0 p will be 0. So, therefore, we will be considering values from values from 1, 2, 3 etc. for uh, the term n. So, now we got p l is n pi. Therefore, p will be equal to n pi by l. So, now we will substitute this value in equation number 5. So, substitute in 5 we can write y of x t equal to c2 sin n pi x by l multiplied by c3 cos c n pi by l t plus c4 sin c n pi by l t. So, I will take this as equation number 6. Now then I will multiply the terms inside the bracket by c2 so that I can write it as y x t is equal to sin n pi x by l c2 c3 cos c n pi t by l plus c2 c4 sin c n pi t by l. So, at this step we will take c2 c3 as a n and c2 c4 as b n. So, therefore, y of x t can be written as sin n pi x by l a n cos c n pi t by l plus b n sin c n pi t by l. And this is true for n equal to 1, 2, 3, etc. up to infinity. So, then by the method of uh, superposition of principle of superposition principle, sum of all the solution will also be a solution. Therefore, so we can write like this by the principle of superposition of solutions. y of x t is equal to sigma n varies from 1 to infinity sin n pi x by l a n cos c n pi t by l plus b n sin c n pi c c n pi t by l is also a solution of the given equation is also a solution of the given equation. I will take it as seventh equation. So, now at this step uh, the problem in this problem we have to find out two constants a n and b n for that we will use initial conditions. And the first initial condition is that y of x t is so, given initial condition is y of x 0 equal to f of x. 
Now substitute this one in equation number 7. So we will get fx is sigma n varies from 1 to infinity sin n pi x by l a n cos 0. We will get t 0 therefore we will get a n and then this term is 0. So then I will rewrite this one in this form. Therefore fx is sigma n varies from 1 to infinity a n sin n pi x by l and we know that this is a half range Fourier series of half range Fourier series of the function f of x. Therefore, the Fourier coefficient a n can be found by using the formula 2 by l integral 0 to l f of x sin n pi x by l dx. And now I will take it as the eighth equation. Now for applying the second initial condition we will differentiate equation number 7 partially with respect to t. So in this case we get this one as dou y by dou t is equal to sigma n varies from 1 to infinity sin n pi x by l and now here we have c n cos uh, c n pi t by l. So therefore this c n pi by l the constant will come there. So in multiplied by c n pi by t then in the bracket minus a n sin n pi c t by l plus b n cos n pi c t by l. So this is the derivative of seventh equation. Now then we will apply the initial condition. So initial condition is dou y by dou t at t equal to 0 is g of x. So put t equal to 0 in this equation. So we will get g x is equal to sigma n varies from 1 to infinity sin n pi x by l c n pi by t b n. So this is true okay here it is b n. Now this is true for all x. So now we can see that again this represents a half range Fourier series. So I will rewrite rearrange the terms here in this form. So we can write this g x as sigma n varies from 1 to infinity c n pi by t okay this is uh, not t c n pi by this is l okay c n pi by l multiplied by sin n pi x by l and now the constant b n also. So this is again half range Fourier sign series. So therefore its coefficient we can calculate. So coefficient is c n pi by l multiplied by b n. This is the coefficient here and this is equal to 2 by l into integral from 0 to l and then g of x sin n pi x by l dx. So I will take it as the equation number 9. So therefore we got an expression for a n and b n okay and again we got the solution, solution is written in the seventh equation. So what we can say is that the solution of the given problem is this one okay given by seventh equation where a n and b n are given by equation 8 and 9. So we can write down therefore solution of the given problem is of the given problem is y of x t is equal to 
sigma n varies from 1 to infinity sin n pi x by L multiplied by a n cos n pi c t by L plus b n sin n pi c t by L where a n is given by seven eighth equation and b n is given by ninth equation. So, in each and every problem we have to write wave equation and then given boundary conditions and initial conditions then write down the solution directly after that apply initial conditions and boundary conditions and find out the values of the constants and write down the final solution.